Okay. Um, I got about five minutes left. In that time, let's say our first words about Wi-Fi. Okay, so in these minutes, I'm just going to give you the quick history of the Wi-Fi standard. So the first uh, Wi-Fi standard, <coughs> just plain 802.11, was first introduced in 1997. And that covered data rates of around 1 to 2 megabits. Stepping up from there. 802.11a and b. A, just about nobody ever used as far as I know. B was the super famous one at 11 megabits. And both of these were in 99. A was, A actually had a very high data rate. It was between 27 and 54 megabits. It was distinct from both B and what had come before in that it did not occupy the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth that actually operated at 5 gigahertz. And as a consequence, uh, it tended to have very short range, and that's why it wasn't, wasn't used very much. Yeah, yeah. Pardon? Uh, B, could, B could certainly do that better than A, so I guess you could say B was more robust. Uh, next, the next uh, major was G in about 2003. Actually, yeah, I, I don't know why they jumped from B to G. I have no idea. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the letters are boring. Yeah, good one. 22 to 54. I guess. So what's 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 our next one? N. Uh, it's not released yet. It's anticipated in about 2010, and that'll be. 100 to 600. They have ones released on the drafts. The drafts. So yeah, the thing is, the thing about this, and that was also true of G. What happened was, um, some of the uh, some of the companies participating in the standard decided to release their own 802.11 G devices early, and the same thing is happening with N. So if I were you, I would not buy any N device until the standard is set because it probably won't. It 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 may or may not comply with what they finally decide. Some of them say it's one of the promised like firmware upgradable with the final spec comes out. Okay, yeah, but if your company if that company goes bankrupt, then you're screwed, right? So, uh, and there's a there's a good chance of that. So, um, one I mean one thing that I'd like you to note here is, uh, for one thing, okay, um, G most G devices are backward compatible. So, um, actually, I'm not sure about no, just about nobody advertises backward compatibility all the way to this legacy one, but certainly they they advertise it back to B. Uh, similarly, N will probably be backwards compatible back to B. So compare that with Ethernet. So as I said in the beginning of class, uh, uh, companies and schools and so on and so forth spent a lot of money to retrofit <coughs> their buildings with Ethernet cables. Uh, most of those cables were Cat5. So the most recent uh, Ethernet standards are up in the... Uh, Cat5 is great up to about 100 megabits per second. Uh, the most recent standards of Ethernet are up to a gigabit, 10 gigabits. There's proposals for even beyond that. However, Cat5 is great at 100 megabits, not very good at a gigabit, and impossible beyond a gigabit. So in other words, if you want to go to a gigabit Ethernet, you probably would have to rip out all that cable and start again. With wireless, all you have to do is change the terminals. So that's a fairly compelling reason why wireless LAN is a good idea. That's the flexibility side that I talked about. Okay, any questions? So I will see you on Tuesday, and don't forget it's the quiz on Tuesday.